Jo reckons she can prove that the global warming we're experiencing now can't be caused by the same things that have driven climate change in the past. So I wanted to show you this uh, particular graph, which is showing the temperatures from uh, the year 1000 to 1850, okay. and it's showing the difference in temperature between the average. So the average here is zero, and values above that are warmer, and below that are cooler. And you see it wiggling along here until about 1850. All these temperatures, I mean, thermometers weren't invented back here. How are, they, how are they taking all these temperatures? That's right. Well, this involves painstaking work by a number of scientists using what are referred to as proxy measurements um, by using tree rings or ice core sediments, and the scientists can detect from those what the temperature at that time would have been in that location. Well, there's a lot, a lot of change in here, isn't it? That's the first thing. There's a lot more change than I thought, thought there would be. So this, if this is about 1,000 years ago, this is really warm. This is the medieval warm period, then, is it? This is sometimes referred to as the medieval warm period. So I, I suppose I can see a trend in here. It's just a bit warmer here. That's right. And it's a little bit cooler oh. along here in the 17th and 18th centuries, which is referred to as the Little okay. Ice Age. So can solar variations and volcanic eruptions explain this? It can do a pretty good job. So if we ask a computer what it would predict over that period with just the solar and volcanic influences, mm -hmm. um, we'll come up with this blue curve here. And you can see that compared with the red curve, it's matching quite well. And also the size of the wiggles correspond quite well over this record. This cold period here, you know, rough guess 1815, is that... Is that that's Tambora? the effects of Tambora, that's oh, right. It is. It's a downward peak in temperature. Right. In oh, so, OK, so we can actually see it there. Look, it had a massive difference. So I finally have an explanation for all those climate changes I've seen through history like the medieval warm period and the Little Ice Age. So this, this takes us right up to about 150 years ago. That's right. So now what happened? Well, this is what the temperature records show. Wow. And um, this is measurements made from thermometers, so it's real temperature measurements, not proxies, so we're fairly confident that this is accurate. And this curve is sometimes known as the hockey stick, as you can see from the shape. Yeah, I can see why it's called this being the handle... That's right. ..and that being the business yes. end. <laughs> But it's a massive change, Joe, between what's happened over here. Even if you project the medieval warm period here over to here, it's, it's nothing like as, it's as warm a, as it is. Yes. That's massive. Much compared. warmer than anything over the past 1,000 years. But then, if you just excuse me, the, the blue line, was anything equally dramatic going on with the volcanoes and sun activity line? Well, we asked the computer to um, tell us that, and this is what it comes up with. Mm -hmm. And you can see there's some large wiggles and it's going up in the middle of the 20th century. But by the time you get to the year 2000, there's a large difference between the prediction and the actual measurements. Mm -hmm. So it looks like that the solar and volcanic factors can't reproduce that warming over that period. So uh, what we do then is we have to include uh, greenhouse gases. And if we put greenhouse gases along with the solar and volcanic forcing into the model, this is what it comes up with. And you can see we've got a warming over that 150-year that period, which is roughly similar to the ob observations. So we think mm. that by including the greenhouse gases, we can actually explain this warming. The green line is our activity, greenhouse gases. And it's not until you put the greenhouse gases in that you make sense of this massive increase in temperature. That's right. The, the natural factors can't produce that warming. It's only when we introduce the human factors that the warming can be explained. <laughs>